Oh, okay. Yep. I, oh, I went to Palmer West, so uh -huh. I understand the quarter system real good. Yeah, so just, you're in, in, in clinic right now, right? Like halftime? Just started, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And did you guys have like a split where you can spread it out? So we can take two of the quarters and convert it into three, so we have a lighter load when we first start clinic. That's what I did. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that's been kind of nice. It's been a lot more... Uh, I mean, it's still a lot of work, but it's not as stressful as it was. Fantastic. Yeah, no, it's ours was kind of like you just get in it and, and you're in the rut for, for three and a half years. And then if, you know how it is. If you miss a class or you fail one, then you roll back type of thing. So, yeah, yeah it was our, I, I had a great experience at Palmer, but it was very demanding for a lot of students that started with me. I mean, we started with 36 and graduated with 16. So we had a huge rollback as far as how things progressed through. We had one hell of a nasty uh, neurophys, neuronat teacher, though. And, like, he had laid the hammer. And it was, like, more about just figuring out, like, his game, like, how his systems worked. And once you mm. figured it out, then you could, like, nail his test. You knew how to study for it. But it literally took sometimes, like, a full semester for some people to get it through their heads. And it was bad. So it's like, just tick the boxes, man, and move out, you know? <laughs> That's what it's like for me. I, so, just yeah. before my my clinical neurology class well just before the final this quarter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean it was that morning i was reviewing and kind of stressed out and i just started flipping through the pages and kind of making some flashcards. and all of a sudden i was like oh this is how i should have studied for the class the whole time <laughs> and it that repeats for me every single quarter it's that last day or so before the final exam where i'm like ah now yeah. i get it now i know how to study for this class yeah, so I know. Frustrating. I, I remember when I was going through, I felt like um, chiropractic college was like was like the uh, like survivor, like, you know, the TV show survivor, because like you would learn something and you'd be like, you know, an undergrad was like, bam, this is how you learn. Bam, I know how to test, get all these tests. But it seemed like in chiropractic college, every quarter it changed. You know, you're like, wait, wait, now I'm just not knowing what the bone is and I got to know what's wrong with it. Then it's like, no, 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 now I have to know what it is, what's wrong with it and how to fix it. Now I have to tell somebody else, you know. So it was like one thing after another. And I swear to God, I was like, am I on Survivor? Because all these people are falling all out of classes all around us and stuff. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. Well, do you want to jump in? Do you want to start? I mean, do you have any other front, front end questions for me at all? I mean, I'm pretty easy. I'm in a complete open book. Ask cool. me anything you cool. want. And I know this is a student driven as far as for you. That's right. So um, fire away. You can ask me. It, it, our paths are similar. You'll find out as we get into the into the story of COD. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, I, I I dig what you're doing. So I'm cool. here to help. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So I I was reading up on you. I was reading on the site, the About Me stuff. Sure. And you wrote in your your kind of little personal profile that this idea to meld chiropractic with a social network came from your exposure as a second generation chiropractor to the profession mm -hmm. for so many years and yep. just being in this being born in this certain generation so yep. do you consider yourself a digital native um i don't know if i would necessarily consider myself a digital native i consider myself a digital i can figure it out <laughs> you know <laughs> um when i first started circle of docs matter of fact i should back up and give you a little bit of a history as far as kind of how it all came about. When I was in school, and probably much like you guys are currently, we had a magical disc that we passed from class to class. Now, I, I graduated in 2009, so I'm sure you guys may use Dropbox or something else right now. But we, for every class at Palmer West, we had a class representative. And your job for the first day of class as a class rep was to figure out how to get the disc from the class above you to pass down. Now sometimes that was in form of bribery, which was like I will take the whole class out for a few drinks and have a good time. Other times it was, you know, hey, I heard about you at this last party and I won't tell anybody about you if you give me the disc, right? Oh, so oh my <laughs> gosh, so you're resorting to blackmail. Hey, whatever it took, man. So That's this is I mean. a disc with with files of notes of yeah, practice yep. tests, things like you that. You got it. Everything yeah. like that. You know, it, at Palmer West, they um, they I don't know if they would call it digitized all of the the teachers notes, but they put them like in these binder things and the teachers would teach out of the binders in conjunction with textbooks, right? Well, we took it one step further and digitized all of our notes so we didn't have to handwrite a lot of stuff and then we put footers and all kinds of crazy stuff in there and it was this huge perpetual file that would just get passed down from class to class and added to. 
So when I was in school, I was a part of a team that actually helped put together a website where we could just go and dump it all there and every class could go so we wouldn't have to bribe each other and then we could use it as a huge repository. So when I got out of school, it kind of fell apart. There was no one did it anymore and we just they all re reverted back to I guess the disks or whatever was used. Well, I got out of class or got out of school and graduated and I practiced with my father, second generation chiropractor just like you said. And no one in my class knew what to do. They didn't know how to open their doors. They didn't know how to do any sort of business. They had no idea. So I, I started uh, my or excuse me. I started class school with 36. Like I told you earlier, we graduated 16. So we created this ginormous email chain asking like, Hey, how do you name a practice? Hey, how do I set up this? How do I do this? Blah 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 blah. And I was literally one of the only ones that worked for somebody that was willing to share. So my dad really kind of said, well, you know, he'd give me some tips and this and that. So finally I got to a point where I was like, you know what, I should just create a website. I kind of know how to do it from back in the school days. So I just threw up this very, very rudimentary uh, WordPress site that kind of had, had a very Facebook smallish like tick box where people could just put you know their thoughts and stuff underneath it. I'm saying this was as basic Nathan as you could get it, right? Well, now, was this already was this Circle of Dogs 1.0 or yeah, is this even yeah. before that? No, okay. this is this is Circle of Dogs 1.0. I was on that. I don't know oh. if you know. I joined I mean, I think this was before I started chiropractic oh, wow. school. Oh wow. Wow. I was awesome. on Circle of Dogs 1.0, yeah. So okay. I've known about you for for a long time. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, anyway, I got this hair up my butt kind of and I was like, you know, wouldn't it be awesome to like bring some of the big wigs in the profession onto this so they could at least see what's going on. So I practiced in, uh, on the Central Coast in California and David Jackson and his wife Nicole were coming through and they were going to stop at a local CCA event here and they were going to um, they were going to talk about I think it was epic practice at the time or something. So I arrived half hour early, shook his hand and said, hey I want to try this. I have no idea if this is going to work so I just set up my web camera. And we had actually a thousand people watch that. Now it crashed the servers a bunch of times, and I think it was probably the first ever digital chiropractic event to be streamed across the web. So this and was what year was this again? 2011, I think it was. And this we was were, a live stream. Yeah, it was a live stream. I used ustream.tv or whatever yeah. it is. I had no idea. I just like knew that I could put an embed code in and try to figure it out. This is, so well, this was before Google, uh, Google Hangouts, which I've used. Before everything. And this was before Meerkat. I don't know if you've seen that come out lately. No, I haven't, but I need to definitely learn uh, oh, about that. You have to look at Meerkat. It's kind of taken Twitter by storm. Ooh, okay, but yeah. That's a side note. Cool, yeah, I'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I did it, and I sent an email out to our list real quick, and I had tons of people, like I said, show up, over a 1,000 people. It crashed our, our site three or four times during the night, and again, I was using like this basic like GoDaddy cheapo 10 bucks site for hosting deal, but I knew we had something there. So I kind of was like, wow, we could really take this somewhere. So I started to grow it and kind of add very small resources, but I didn't blog. I didn't know about any of that stuff yet. Well, long story short, I kind of thought, I need to take this to a different level. So I ended up taking the site down in 2012, I think it was, 2012. And I, and I said, you know, if chiropractic's going to do this right, I really need to wrap my head around this and really do something that's going to help elevate the entire profession, not just like have this like crazy little Facebook thread type of thing. So to make a real long story short, I ended up getting introduced to Patrick Gentempo. And Patrick was just coming off of um, the acquisition of CLA, Chiropractic Leadership Alliance. And he just opened up what he calls Action Potential Holdings. So what Patrick does is he helps invest and, and helps kind of angel fund smaller startup companies. And he saw COD and he was like, this could really revolutionize the entire industry. Because he knew, just like I and, and me and you were talking about, is there is no one place for everything chiropractic. There is no resources for pre-chiropractic or chiropractic students. There's no place online that's going to help you know, get you started in your practice and teach you everything that you really need to run a thriving practice. That's why the failure rate is so high. I don't believe it's because they don't find chiropractic patients. No, no, no. I think it's because people get frustrated and fed up and they feel like their hands are tied behind their back the whole time and they don't know what to do, so they just give up. And I'm not in that mindset at all. I said, you know what, we have to change this. I gave them the whole idea. I mean, we spent months and months and months going through not only what the site's going to look like, but what is the philosophy of, chiro of Circle of Docs? What is our core values, our business principles? I mean, I'm not, you know, really 
how familiar you are with him as far as his philosophy stance and what he does. But man, he he goes through it. So every word that that dude says about all that stuff, he really lives and breathes. So yeah, I just I came to... across his TEDx talk on philosophy. I mean, yeah, it's kind of his big message right now is finding a personal philosophy or a company philosophy or whatever. So that's definitely yep. huge for him. Yep. So yeah, it's it's huge, huge, huge for him. And um, we've been through some struggles already, and even though that we're just early on, but you know, really having those business principles, that core philosophy laid out, man, you always revert back to like, you know, are we living in alignment with this company? Is our message in alignment with what we want? And if it's not, then it goes by the wayside. And if it is, then we can continue to work through it and continue to progress. But you know, I think so many doctors and students, like you know, if you guys are watching this. Finding you what, what your personal philosophy is. Now, whether that's in alignment with the person sitting next to you in class or the doctor or professor teaching you, it can be completely different, and that's fine. But you need to figure out who you are and what type of practice you want to run, and that is going to help propel you once you get out. So you've called Circle of Docs one community for everything chiropractic. Mm -hmm. um, and it's version 1.0 was more of a social network. I'm looking yep. around the site for version yep. 2.0. And it's a little bit different. I guess my question is why why a whole new site and yep. why not create a Facebook group or yep. well, I, w I was gonna say a Google, you know, Google community. No, this is perfect. I, I, I think this that. is this but, is I've been asked this question many times. Yeah, and Facebook group. For, perfect. Thank you first off for answering for asking that. And here's why. First off, what you see on Circle of Docs is very, very content heavy. When we were really conceptualizing how we are going to move this out into the profession, you know, me and Dr. Gentempo said we have to plant very strong roots first. So we went to all of the leaders in the profession. So if you would go and check out who our contributors are, they're kind of the who's who in the chiropractic profession right now. And we sold them basically on this idea that, hey, look, you know, magazines are great, the newspapers and stuff are good, but there is no digital resource online where doctors can, can go to every single day and get a new piece of information that's going to help them grow, help their practices grow, help their communities grow. So what we wanted and what we pitched them is help us help you, basically. Circle of Docs is completely free to use. You know, there's no price. You don't have to charge. It's not $5,000 like, you know, you guys will find out once you get out of practice, into practice, you know, these chiropractic coaches and, you know, management groups and et cetera. We are completely free to use. So what we want is to project a message, basically project really great chiropractic content. So on COD, there is three elements. Number one, the social network, like you said when you saw on, on version one, that is the last element that we're going to roll out. Matter of fact, we're working on putting together a couple, uh, a couple of mobile apps and things right now, which okay, will be, cool. which will walk us down that path to being more social. But what we wanted to start with was to have the most amazing content in chiropractic. So, like I said, we roll out a new piece every single day, and we, you know, we have the chiropractic message. So those are the con content contributors, etc. And then we have the chiropractic news. So anything that goes down as far as legislation, anything that goes down as far as a national or international level, all of that's covered for that is covered on Circle of Docs. And then the last piece is the social aspect. Now what you see currently right now are just some forums where doctors, students, and CAs can go and ask questions. There's the downloads area in there, so you know we have a bunch of resources that people have up for for other people to share. Heck, I think a lot of class notes, a lot of um, board review notes and stuff are all right there. Excuse me. So you guys can go in there and, and tick the box and just put, you know, anatomy. Boom. Then all of the anatomy stuff that people have uploaded, it's all right there for you guys to download and to really take a dive in. And I mean, there's tons of board questions there for students there. Um, lots of resources with different books and, and different videos and things as well. That's cool. As, as of the day that we're recording this, mm -hmm. we just finished uh, uh, finals, I think, probably half of the schools in the country did board exams. Yep. Um, parts one, two, three, physiotherapy. Yep. yep. So this is very cool. We're always looking for resources to study for board exams. Yep. Um, so that's under the community section right now. That is under community, yes. And and also the great part about it is you as the user can go and upload your own as well. So it doesn't have to come from me as you, you know the editor-in-chief or what have you. You can go in there and upload anything that you want. You can share it and you can download it as well. And then, of course, you could share it across Facebook or what have you. Very cool. 
I've but, noticed that recently yeah. you've also started some podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you have one personal or practice one, and then you've got one for Circle of Docs. Yep, that's correct. Yep. What, what got you into podcasting? Um, you know, I love doing video interviews. I think you can remember back in with version one, I did a bunch of like Skype videos like this. And then um, rolling out into this more new current version, um, like I told you earlier, a friend of mine is Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. And he is killing it with podcasting right now. I mean, he's getting like 100,000 downloads at a shot. Now, obviously, chiropractic market's nowhere near that. But what I loved about it was is that I could throw it in my ears on my iPhone and go for a run. Or I can go work out and listen to it. And for us, it's just one more channel to help open up and increase the chiropractic message to the world. So for, you know, doctors and students who are listening to this, you know, that's what I encourage you to do. You know, listen to whoever, you, you know, resonates with you as far as chiropractors. But, you know, you should always be kind of getting that dipped in that chiropractic message every single day. And, you know, I know how it is when you're in class. It's the same teachers over and over and over. And you're like, man, have you even been out in practice? Do you even know how this works? Do you even know how this goes down? You know, so we like to interview a lot of doctors who are successful. We like to interview a lot of people that may have a little bit of a different opinion than you know your current. So it's going to challenge your mindset a little bit. And then you know we like to interview people that are specialized in specialized niches of chiropractic. So if you are interested in you know serving more kids. Um, tomorrow well, on this podcast right now, tomorrow uh, Tony Ebel is going to be out talking about epic pediatrics. So, I mean, we really take a deep dive into all of those different people and really try to spark your interest to kind of expand your knowledge a little bit. That's cool. I've loved podcasts for so long. I mean, before it was cool, I was listening to podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I was recording podcasts before it was cool. But uh, yeah, just today I did a workout at this crazy new healthcare center where uh, they have an altitude training room. Oh, so cool. They, yep. They mm -hmm. simulate up to 17,000 feet. Wow. Today, fortunately, it was just 9,000 feet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got my, my blood oxygen levels down to 80% within like wow. 15 minutes. But I got through, I think, three podcasts from the British Journal of uh, Sports Medicine. Okay. Uh, just like that, you know, just as I'm working out, I can listen. And I listen. I've got, I'm subscribed to your podcast. I'm subscribed to, uh, uh, to the chiropractor philanthropist. Yep, Ed's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's killing it as well. I mean, yeah. he's putting me to shame. And of course, that's one of the, the challenges is that the niche market is a little bit smaller for us. Mm -hmm. But he's showing that you can get the 100,000 downloads even oh, yeah. in, in chiropractic. So that's pretty cool. Why do you think social media is important for students and for doctors to get involved with? Social media as far as like Facebook? Everything. Facebook, podcasting. Well, here's, here's what it comes down to, I think, Nathan. We live in the most technologically advanced time in ever in society. I mean, you're up north in western states. I was talking to one of my teammates that lives out in Germany. You know, we live at a, at a time where we can create one word, and that word is leverage. You know, we have the ability to leverage our voice, our face, the way we type, the way we interact with people. That's what social media is so awesome about. You know, you can post something on Facebook or you can post something on Circle of Docs and people can answer you back instantly, you know. And that's why I love podcasting and, and I can t totally tell that you do as well is because we can put out something that number one will live on basically in infamy, you know, not when my dad was, he's still in practice to this day, but you can only go to one company and give one talk at a time. You know, you can only go and shake hands with one person at a time. But now with technology, we can leverage everything that we have. You know, new patients come into my office and they get a welcome video from me. Ask me any questions, whatever you want. Um, I have a, a podcast that's rolling out this week called um, What Makes Me Tick. And it's basically my background of chiropractic. Now, what I want to do is to deliver that to every new patient and every patient in my office. Because guess what? I'll listen to it. And then they'll go and tell their brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins, right? So why not leverage technology? And the barriers of entry for technology are so incredibly low. I mean, just think about podcasting probably when you started way back when. How hard was it to get it? So hard, right? Now, I mean, look at, um, you're saying, um, uh, talking about a chiropractic philanthropist. He has an amazing program that he's putting 80 people through right now that are basically going to populate um, iTunes with more podcasts. So that's amazing. I mean, and we need more chiropractors out there, you know, elevating their voices. 
I think that's awesome. Um, you create videos for your for your patients, and then do you email those, or do they see them when they first come into your office? Both. You should know that. So when a new patient comes into my office, I take their email automatically, and then I put them into like AWeber or Mailchimp, what I use, and they they automatically get ticked with a new um, a new patient video where it's basically just me talking what's up you know this is me this is kind of who I am welcome to my practice you know I'm here to serve you if there's any way I can help please email please call give all my information you know etc cetera, etc cetera. basically I want to be a hundred percent different than what their normal medical doctor route would be so I am a communicator by trade I am a networker by trade so I want to you know continue to proliferate that and by you know offering those first things to the, my patients, I think they love it. You know, I call all of my new patients the first time I see them in the office. I call them that night, which usually blows them away. And that would probably be the, my biggest tip to students is, you know, when you get out and you start meeting people, call them. <laughs> you know, they will be amazed. You know, when you're doing patient recalls, you call your patient recalls. Hey, what's up? Because you have such a great connection with them. I will probably say 75 to 85% of people that I call for, I guess you would call it quote unquote reactivation will schedule an appointment with me. And it's not because I'm some amazing doctor. I probably am not. It's just that I took the time to call them and to figure out how they were doing. That's awesome. So before we get into kind of some rapid fire questions, a sure. little more about you, I want to highlight the student section of Circle of Docs. Sure. Not There's there's the community, kind of the, uh, mm -hmm. the boards and stuff like that, but there's a section specifically for, for chiropractic and pre-chiropractic students. Yep. Um, what resources are available there? Sure. So actually, I will say this, and, and this is completely to blame for myself, is that is probably the most underutilized and underdeveloped area of Circle of Docs right now. Um, we're working with a couple of companies to create something called Launch. And what Launch for us is giving you guys all of the resources to get ready to go out to launch and practice. So currently what is on um, Circle of Docs and the students is any sort of student-related article. So anything from, hey, do you know these cranial nerves? Hey, what do you think about this? If you have a question, we get a lot of questions from students that come in. We will go out and find an expert in the field and um, have them answer the question for you. Matter of fact, today's main feature um, is how do I explain subluxation? And um, that was by a Dr. Sarah. And she was just, she's brand new. I think she just got out like last quarter. And she's having a bunch of issues explaining what a subluxation is to patients. So, you know, with our contributor list, I got in contact with, um, with Bill Esteb. And then he's like the man when it comes to patient uh, uh, communication. So I said, hey, Bill, how would you answer this? Could you write something down? He's like, absolutely. I love to answer this. Boom, 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 boom. And gave us these three great examples. So I was like, that's money. That's gold right there. We got to put it out there for all of like, you know, our new docs and our students. But ideally, I'm going to create, we are creating a launch type of sequence. And then we have a couple other things I can't tell you quite yet because they're still underneath the wraps. But I will say this, is that every single quarter or every single semester that a student is involved with Circle of Docs, they will be able to be groomed and ready to come out and be indoctrinated in chiropractic philosophy, know chiropractic business, and know how to succeed from the second they, they get that diploma. I'd like to point out, so you guys do, your philosophy uh, does follow the more traditional chiropractic philosophy, would you say that, rather than the schools like Western States or CMCC might be a little more of a mixer or a medically oriented school, would you say that? Well, I would say that we are who we are. We are one place for everything chiropractic. So whether you're a straight, whether you're a mixer, whether you do, you know, whatever you do, you do, right? We are a platform. Now, we don't believe in, you know, injecting drugs into the chiropractic profession, but that is what our beliefs are. Now, we will put out information and then let you guys as members and the community to talk and, and to discuss about it. So if you are asking a question about drugs and you posted something on the forums, absolutely not. It would never be taken down. You can go and we encourage that those types of communications. But for us, we believe that, you know, the chiropractic, it should basically remain drugless. Good. Okay. I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, again, why I start, started this podcast is to make sure that students are just aware yeah. of that spectrum and how different schools 
approach that those topics. Uh, and I'm glad you have a little section here for pre-chiropractic students. Yeah, I got to tell you uh, what, I took a bunch of stuff from yours because it was amazing. I saw the, your Google <laughs> Maps and stuff, and I was like, I, I got to kind of look at yeah, that a little bit because that's awesome. I was like, awesome. hey, those maps look familiar. And then I see my little <laughs> face in the corner of the Google. Yep, uh, there you bed, go. <laughs> so. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I, again, the, this stuff didn't exist uh, before I was getting into chiropractic school. So mm. I think it's awesome that we're collectively all the podcasts all the websites are providing just more and more resources uh, for students to learn more about the profession and about the schools and how to launch into practice so we're looking forward to hearing more about that yeah here's what i think nathan you know and, and maybe you agree with me maybe you don't i'd love your opinion on this but i believe that the last generation of chiropractor was just trying to plant the flag in the ground, so to speak, and just try to get a little bit of ground and say, this is what chiropractic is, guys. You know, we believe above, down, inside, out, that the nervous system's a master controller, that, you know, taking the pressure off the nerve, blah, 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 blah. That's chiropractic, right? Now what I believe, at least that my thoughts are, and probably, I don't know if this is yours as well, is that we can work across the aisle with the medical profession. We can work with, with massage therapists and, and fitness trainers and all of these people because, you know, there's this whole wealth this pie out there and chiropractors just have to step it up and get in front of them and say look this is what we do guys and we do a dang good job of it and you know the medical community they want to know what we do you know people are always so scared about oh I'm gonna work with medical medicine dude I encourage it matter of fact my best referrals come from medical doctors because they understand what we do and that we do a way better job than any other profession out there so we should be not only planting the flag but taking that flag now and running it around the world and then we're gonna start seeing more than what seven percent of the population now we'll have seventy percent of the population so having enough having enough leverage with a digital resource like COD like your podcast you know the time is so prime for this profession to step up into the light and we just need the right leaders and we just need the right people to really step up and to make it happen. I would agree. I think we do have, in many ways, more in common with with medical practitioners than we might think. In mm -hmm. fact, I was listening to that, that BGSM podcast a while back, had an episode where a medical doctor was saying, exercise should be part of our vitals. <laughs> and he was saying, before I prescribe any drugs, mm -hmm. uh, before I let them go into surgery I say let's try exercise for a few months I was like mm -hmm. whoa here's a medical yeah. doctor just saying that that's where we need to start and that's in my experience at least that's what chiropractors have been encouraging me to do for so long mm -hmm. um, on the other hand I wonder when we're putting out so much information like this and you've got people writing for your website um, other chiropractors are making posts on Facebook it also doesn't it open us up to a lot of criticism because we see Facebook groups that are are coming up now specifically to say, oh, this is what a crazy chiropractor said yep. and kind of tearing us down. How do we balance that risk versus the reward? I think number one, it's a personal it's a personal decision. You know, I think that some people, I mean, and it can be in any profession, they can put their foot in their mouth and say some pretty stupid stuff, right? So I think as a doctor, you just have to be a little bit calculated as far as what you're going to be projecting and putting out there. Um, but I also think that people in general, the normal society, are fed up. They're fed up with being on drugs. They're fed up with crazy amounts of surgery. And they're fed up with stuff that doesn't work. And that's probably why a lot of doctors now are prescribing exercise. They're prescribing meditation. They're prescribing all these quote-unquote alternative care, right? Because normal allopathic care is doing nothing but just doping them up and putting them up on more drugs. And they're finding out that it doesn't work. So, you know, why wouldn't we as the chiropractic profession say, hey, look, here is a quote unquote alternative to what you guys are doing and allowing the body to heal naturally by just you know basically getting out of the way of it start eating good food start exercising getting adjusted frequently you know those are the types of things that can allow the body to heal and you know to answer your question uh, criticism is actually good that means people are looking at you you know Grant Cardone I don't know if you know who he is he's like this big time business guy he said hey man if you ain't got any haters then you're doing something wrong so go out and get you some haters, you know? So that's the way I look at it too, is that, you know, people are going to hate on Circle of Docs. Matter of fact, they, they already have. And, they you know, they call us quacks and everything else. But guess what? We get people better. 
and we keep them healthier and they live longer and healthier lives than they ever have before. So you can't deny that as far as chiropractic is concerned. Awesome. I'm going to let you tell people how to sign up, but first I want to ask you some uh, sure. kind of rapid fire questions. Go I for it. Anything I you want. haven't told you what these are yet, so you can, <laughs> and, and the goal is to answer them kind of as succinctly as, as, as you can, but okay. you have the option to pass if anything is Go for it. Um, uncomfortable for you. Uh, so let's see. Finish this sentence. Chiropractic is? Chiropractic is, chiropractic is life. That's what chiropractic is. Chiropractic gives people life. And I know for a lot of students that are watching this, you haven't, under, you haven't seen that yet. But when people come in carrying their babies that they're going to be injecting with more vaccines, when they when they carrying their babies in that can't turn their heads after a year and a half and they've been on 20 medications and they're talking about cutting their SCM muscles off and you deliver a chiropractic adjustment and that baby picks up his head and, and turns at you, that is life, people. You know, people come in with crazy, you know, radiating leg pain with, you know, disc herniations that have had three failed surgeries surgeries and it doesn't work and you do some work over a couple of weeks with them and now they're out playing with their kids and being able to run around and provide for their family and that is life that's chiropractic awesome um where do you see chiropractic in 10 years in 10 years from now i see i see chiropractic full that's what i see i see chiro i see chiropractic and chiropractors chiropractors having abundantly full practices i think that our messaging just has to get out there in the right way, and then we can all elevate the profession together. Can you describe your ideal patient in one sentence? My ideal patient in one sentence? Well, I think the easiest would say is any, any person with a spine, right? I think that's what most people would probably tell you. <laughs> all right, if you could only use three treatments for the rest of your career, whether it's a technique or... Um... A specific adjustment which ones would they be do you want technique specific doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be it could be heating pads or it could be laser or it could be yeah adjust the adjust the spine teach them how to eat the right foods and teach them how to move their bodies that's it awesome I'm big on movement I love the movement mm -hmm. one um, what's the best time you've ever had in practice 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. I love practice. It's it's easy. It's practice. You guys will find this out that practice is easy and it's fun. You know, I think when you when you're in school so much, it's it's a drudge. It's one class after another. But when you start getting out and practice, man, and you start actually adjusting people and getting your hands on people, your hands come alive. They, you almost feel like your hands are like hot. I mean, I remember when I was in, in in chiropractic college, if I got to adjust five or eight people a day, I thought it was like this amazing thing, right? But you know, when you're in practice, seeing I see about 30, 35 patients a day, but I've been working in clinics where 100, 200, 500, I mean, these people were down in like Peru with uh, Liam Schubel and they're seeing 500 people a day. Their hand, your hands get hot and you get that energy going in and it's practice is just fun, to be honest with you. I was down in Haiti in the Dominican Republic uh, about six months ago, yeah, and it was, I was just dripping sweat. Yeah, but you probably were like more fired up than you ever have in your entire life, right? Well, I felt bad because I was I was literally dripping sweat onto faces of patients. I was <laughs> setting them up for cervical adjustments. Oh, I felt so bad. But they loved it. They, you know, the Haitians are, uh, they they just love it. They don't care. A buddy of mine is uh, Chris Zeno. Do you know who he is? Yeah, I've seen a lot okay. of his videos. Yeah, so Chris and then um, Tabor Smith worked with him, and and I I remember I was talking to him one day, and it was late too. It was like probably ten or eleven o'clock at night. And I'm like, man, like, I can't believe you're still up. You know, it's 11 o'clock in Texas. It's 9 o'clock here. He's like, dude, I can't go to sleep. I'm so fired up. So he's like, I have this, like, crazy amount of energy. I feel like I've had five coffees. I'm like, what did you do today? He's like, I adjusted more patients than I ever have in my life. And I'm like, you're not tired? He's like, I'm beat tired, but I can't go to bed. <laughs> I was like, that's so awesome, man. <laughs> all right. If you were to do it all over again, which school would you choose to attend? Oh man, that is such a oh, that's a double-edged sword for me right there. You know, I absolutely loved my time at Palmer West. I w it was in a smaller class. Um, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a loud mouth and like to speak up, so that worked out really great for me. Um, from a resources-only type of perspective, I think um, 
Life University is doing some amazing things right now. Um, Life Georgia in particular, they have put like incredible amounts of money and resources into it. They've also been really diving deep into the philosophy. But I love the Palmer. I love the the idea of um, you know the Fountainhead, the Harvard of chiropractic, all of that. But ultimately, what this thing comes down to, and if you're a pre chiropractic student listening to this, is you've got to go figure out what you like. You know, I think if you think about what you did with undergrad, you went in and checked out different schools, you really got to meet a lot of the professors, you got to sit some classes, you need to do the exact same thing going in, going into chiropractic college and just figure out what really jives with you. You know, you should walk through those halls and one of those schools will just be speaking to you like, this is it. You know, Sherman, that, that could be at Palmer, Florida, that's where I want to be. Or maybe it's not even in the U.S., maybe some international schools as well. Some people love to study abroad, so that could be a, another great resource. Yeah, I mean, there's there's about 18 in North America that are English speaking. Then there's yep. another 35 around the world. Yeah, and like you mentioned, I've I've created those maps so you can kind of go and just ex- the New Z. Hey, I'll tell you what, we have a bunch of uh, uh, students on COD that are from New Zealand, and they are like crazy big chiropractic students. So you know, for you guys, maybe go check out New Zealand and see if that rhymes with you. <laughs> that is that school has been recommended to me a number of times. Yeah, I did an interview with. Uh, uh, some students down there that just graduated, and I'm blanking on their name. I just messaged them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they've got uh, a great blog, Our Extraordinary Lives, Brian Lanou. Got it. And got it. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've done interviews with a lot of these schools. I'm trying to get more. I've got many more to go to reach my goal. Uh, where should location rank in the criteria that you're using to choose a school? Because about 90% of people go to the school closest to them. I think it, like I said with the previous, you know, example you're asking me, it all has to come down to to what you want. You know, some people like let's just take an example. I went to Palmer West in San Jose, which was a million people. I was a campus guide and was lucky enough to go to Davenport, Iowa, and check it out. And I think those was maybe fifty thousand people in all of Davenport. Don't get you're me wrong. You're saying in the in the area, not at the school, right? But in San Jose, there's a million population. Correct. Cool. Correct. So I think when choosing your school you need to really look at the location having to do with what kind of vibes with you. Do you feel like you learn best in that kind of hustle and bustle? Or do you learn best if you have no distractions and you're just 100% chiropractic from you know six to six type of thing? So I think it's a personal decision. Thank you for saying that. That I, I agree 100% and I had never put it in that perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, because I fight with the idea of just going to the closest school and yet, mm-hmm. for me, it was location, mm-hmm. even though it wasn't the closest school for me, because I, I have to have nature accessible, yeah. and I've yeah. got to be able to get out and and just kind of get that physical uh, relaxation and and rejuvenation. That's great. Uh, okay. Other than chiropractic, can you name one thing that chiropractic students just have to check out? It can be anything: movie, food, uh, a book, uh, just what have you come across lately that you're just super hyped about that you enjoyed so much that other people should check out? I think just the ability to turn off and to do something completely different. I don't know if there should be one specific resource because I think every person is different, but I think for like exactly what you said, you know, I can be working so hard in in clinic, I can be working so hard on the books, but I need to, to detach, I need to turn it off. You know, I I, I practice on the Central Coast, so I'm an ocean guy. You know, I want to go put my feet in the sand and my water. I want to go surf. I want to go run in the hills with my family. You know, so I think you've got to do something that's 180 degrees opposite of what you do every single day in chiropractic college. So for me, I sat on my butt and went to class every single day for eight hours, which means I needed to go run and jump and get dirty and sweaty and get in the ocean for at least an hour or two a day. And if I could do that, you know, I think I believe I could create a pretty good balance that got me through. Awesome. All right. Uh, thanks so much for being on Exploring Chiropractic. Let the students know how they can sign up for Circle of Docs. Yep, very, very easy. Just go to circleofdocs.com, guys, you know, and just sign up. It's right there. You can connect with your Facebook. You can you know, put a, a name and user password in and, and, and go about and do it all that way. But that's it. It's literally one click. You're connected via your Facebook, which we actually prefer 
because we can pull a bunch of your fun stuff with all of your friends and things about and you can share a little bit easier anyway. And that's it. Go explore. Ask questions. Get involved. The doctors that are the most successful are the ones that ask. You know, a community raise, uh, you know, they say a, a tribe can raise a person better than a, one single person can. Awesome. I, I love the student forum in here. Uh, you've got a couple guys that are pretty active and you know, there's questions like, is it helpful to live with other students while you're in yep. school or live on yep. your own? Um, how much does it cost to go to college? I don't even want to think about that, so I'm not going to read it. Um, and, hey, here's a great one. How did you choose your chiropractic college? i got to check that one out. Um, yep. So circleofdocs.com. Where can people find you and follow you, Dr. Bo Pierce, online? Uh, you can go Circle of Docs, obviously. On um, Facebook, we our Circle of Docs Facebook page. I think we have about 8,000 likes there as well. You can friend me on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty easy to, to find. And how about your podcast? What's that one called? Um, that's called Doc Talk. And it's just I pick a topic a day or I pick a, a week or just kind of what's on my mind. I find with Circle of Docs, I'm always talking chiropractic and I don't get a lot of chance to just talk off the top of my head to my patients. So I blog once a week on my own personal site and about anything. I think this week I talked about um, epigenetics and how, you know, how chiropractic plays a role in the epigenetics and the nervous system. So I'm all about education and content and the more we're able to put out really great information to the world and to our community the it's going to respond back to you and it's going to grow your practice and, and life bigger awesome well dr bo pierce uh, ceo and founder of circle of docs thank you again for being on exploring chiropractic no problem thank you